All right, you, you have found it. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's weather for Weather Geeks, the Wednesday evening edition. Cold, cold, cold. And, you know, the cold's going to ease some by the upcoming weekend, but only by, you know, a, a certain degree. It's not exactly a pattern flip coming our way anytime real soon. But, uh, you know, today was at least brighter than we bargained for. Uh, we started the day with clouds, but this time lapse from our Canfield Fairgrounds camera. We'll show the uh, decrease in clouds by the afternoon. Uh, the sky brightened considerably, and this is a little bit of a forecast surprise. We didn't expect that much clearing during the second half of the day today. Made for a nice sunset a little after 6 p.m. this evening. All right, the cold air, which has infiltrated most of the U.S. east of the Rockies, has made it all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Uh, the Peninsula of Florida is not participating in winter once again today. 79 still in Miami. Doesn't that sound nice? But you know, Raleigh's down to 26, and snow and ice uh, is continuing to cause some issues down in the uh, southeast. It's snowing in Virginia Beach this evening. Uh, we've had sleet and freezing rain and mixed precipitation around Myrtle Beach. Cold rain for a lot of the beaches of South Carolina. Outer banks of North Carolina, just no fun out there tonight. That is for sure with a cold rain and some mixed precipitation. Our weather will be influenced by this system, which we have to look to the upper levels to, uh, you know, kind of take a peek at. This is, uh, you know, kind of a satellite imagery that I don't show all that often, but I do when I want to illustrate something going on in the mid levels or the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is the water vapor channel, um, and you can kind of pick out the, uh, the swirl. There's an upper level system, low pressure, if you will, moving through the uh, lower Great Lakes and getting set to dumbbell into uh, parts of Indiana and Ohio overnight, it'll start to pick up some moisture and deposit it in the form of light snow. Coming our way probably just before daybreak on Thursday morning, our hourly snow chances start ramping up around 5 to 6 a.m. And, you know, don't expect to look outside in the morning and see, you know, just really heavy snow rates and low visibility and that sort of thing. Uh, but some pixie dust snow, sure. This is going to be real light and fluffy. It's going to be sticking to everything, though, with temperatures well down into the teens. So those snow chances hourly, you know, they stay elevated through a good chunk of the daylight hours. Even though the steadiest snow, when it snows most consistently, probably is during the morning. We go back to kind of you know, more scattered in nature, those snow showers, for the midday and afternoon. Here's one model depiction of the uh, running snow accumulations uh, for tomorrow. And this is just one model depiction. It's not going to be exactly how it plays out, but I think this is generally speaking for a lot of places going to be about the right idea. We can probably expect a half an inch worth of snow on the uh, ground by 8 or 9 a.m. in a lot of places on our way to maybe an inch or so by midday and on our way to an inch and a half, maybe up to two or so uh, before the day is through. We, we still have that one to three range in our forecast, but you know, I think three is really the, the top end of the, uh, you know, kind of the envelope of possibilities. Don't want to discount someone getting three. With this high ratio kind of snow, there's, you know, oftentimes an overachiever somewhere. And I don't want to rule that out for tomorrow. But a lot of us are going to see an inch and a half, two, maybe two and a half inches worth of snow. Uh, the odds of seeing less than an inch, very, very low. We think someone, everyone's going to follow, fall I should say, somewhere between that one and, say, two and a half to three inch range. Your odds of getting more than three are also pretty low because while this is high ratio snow, uh, this isn't very deep moisture. This isn't a uh, the kind of system that uh, is going to draw in a bunch of golf moisture and that sort of thing. This is going to be real pixie dust snow that you can just brush off your car very easily, but it can also accumulate fairly efficiently. Those snow showers will then taper off as we go into the late day hours into Thursday night. We're left with just clouds on Friday. Clouds will break for some sunshine. Then for the weekend, we'll see some sun both Saturday and Sunday, I think, but only a modest warm up for the upcoming weekend. When we look at the upper level flow, the jet stream level, if you will, we're looking for some signs of a pattern change. We're looking for some sort of ridge of high pressure to build across the eastern U.S., and it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, when we look out through time here, you know, the pattern's going to relax some next week into more of a zonal flow instead of a, you know, kind of a north-south flow. That'll allow it to warm up some, but only some. You know, we're not going to pop a 60-degree day or anything like that around here anytime real soon. You know, tomorrow uh, is February the 20th, and, you know, we're, when we get into the last, you know, week to 10 days of February, especially the last week of February, it's not uncommon around here to see some 60s. We've even had 70s in recent years during that last week or so of February. It's just not in the cards for this year. Um, and, you know, I speculated a little on social media earlier in case you missed that. Uh, I didn't show you any model data for early March in this video, but 
the models data is not real encouraging for early March. I think there's going to be a, you know, the pattern's going to kind of reinvigorate uh, a little bit as we go into early March, bringing down chunks of cold air. Now, by early March, the sun angle is becoming more and more of an issue, more and more of a factor. And colder air in early March is not the same as colder air in mid-January, but still a lack of warmth, I think, will characterize much of early March around here. Maybe we'll pop a couple of milder days here and there, but I, I do think that, uh, generally speaking, you know, we're not going to see uh, signs of spring, if you will, anytime real soon. We'll break down more of the longer range in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks, especially once I lose this nagging cold. Thanks for watching on this Wednesday evening. Have a great night. I'll see you back here on Thursday.